الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم إحسانا إلى يوم الدين. I am really honored and uh, blessed and thankful to be in front of all of you tonight. It's uh, it's a great blessing every time I come to Valley Ranch. For those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know those like really nice homey masjids? Like they're not like those giant mega masjids like INT or Irving. But when you walk in, you feel like you're walking into like someone's living room. You know, they call the masjid Allah's house, but you feel like you're walking into like the living room. <laughs> you know, mashallah, every time I come to Valley Ranch or any other, you know, nice cozy masjid or masallah, I feel very uh, at home. So Jazakallah Khair for inviting me. Jazakallah Khair to Sheikh. Move in? Yeah, <laughs> not enough room. Uh, <laughs> I, uh... Hint, hint. Uh, okay, the the Jackal Khairi Imam Zia and also Sheikh Hassan Burjaz. Uh, Sheikh Hassan Burjaz is always excellent, and you guys are very lucky to have him. Let me just quickly put out there real quick. He was in a masjid that will go unnamed in Chicago, and uh, unfortunately the situation did not work out. But Alhamdulillah, it worked out for you know each party uh, to to move forward with plans. So don't be that next masjid, okay? <laughs> just hold on tight. You guys got a good one, Mashallah Taala. Okay, so we're going to begin, inshallah, with the evils of Nintendo 64. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> inshallah, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about Facebook, right? So the, the, the flyer, or the, the, the topic was friends, relationships, and Facebook. And although each speaker has kind of, uh, you know, mentioned or touched on how Facebook or the internet or cyber relationships can affect your life, I just wanted to give a quick primer, a quick debriefing, really quickly, inshallah. I know you guys are excited to ask questions uh, about the good and the bad of Facebook. Before I start, I want to really quickly let, let everyone know that Facebook is a tool, right? If I asked you, is fire good or bad? Say it out loud. Good. Some people say bad. Some people say good. Some people say depends. That is an adult diaper. I do not wear those. Uh, <laughs> some people say good. Some people say bad. Why is it bad? Some, one person, please raise your hand. Yes. Okay, because it's hot flame. Why is it good? Thank you. And you can get burned by hot flame, right? Why is it good? Yes? Because you can cook stuff. Like exactly. That. Muslims. Because you can cook. Bariyani nahari. Right? So, some people might say, you know, you could build, you know, you know, form metals with it. You know, you can get heat from it. You know, uh, others, Muslims, will say you can cook with it. That is excellent. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but you see the example given here, right? Fire is a tool, and tools can be used for good or bad. And as the Sheikh, you know, Yasser Burgess, who, you know, he's, mashallah, very, very well, uh, you know, um, well knowledgeable about fiqh, he can tell you that tools like Facebook or fire, these things, cannot be definitively given a ruling of halal or haram. It depends on the context, it depends on the usage, right? So you can use a hammer to build a house, you can also use a hammer to break into someone's car. There's many different ways to use different tools. Don't break into anyone's car, please. Especially not a gold Camry, okay? Okay. Uh, so really quickly, inshallah, I want to highlight, because I know the general feeling amongst the community, especially the elders, our respected and beloved parents and, and uncles and aunties, is that Facebook is not that good to have. It's very unsafe. It's not, you know, productive. You waste time on it. And all these concerns, they have valid points and valid reasons. But we want to first, we want, we want to bring the, uh, the topic to an objective table and talk about it from both viewpoints. So the first viewpoint, and many of us can, you know, uh, appreciate this, is the good part of Facebook. As Farooq said, at la la last month at Love Struck, alhamdulillah, we had over 800 people in attendance. We had over 1,000 people who uh, logged on to watch it, alhamdulillah. All of the events that we have at INT have been very successful. This event as well, a major success for you guys. MashaAllah, may Allah bless you guys. The majority, the majority of the marketing done for you guys, I'm sure, and for us, the only marketing Barely any emails, no paper flyers. I have not printed one paper flyer for an INT event. Has all been done through Facebook. Everything has been done through Facebook. On top of that, kids constantly message me questions that they need answers to. Can I go to prom? Yes. No, I'm kidding. No, you can't go to prom. Okay. Can I, can I do this? Can I do that? And I answer it via Facebook. It has become a new way of communicating with people. It has become a new way of reaching out, of letting people know, hey, here's what's going on, of letting people know, hey, poke me, right? The, the Facebook has become a new, a new realm, a new frontier that we can use for good, inshallah ta'ala. One of them, as we said, is the event, using events and publicizing events such as this. Another way is to reconnect with old friends. How many of you guys and girls have reconnected with the people that you haven't seen in so long through Facebook? Right? All the youngins are like, yeah, I didn't see my friend for like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> And then she poked me, right? I'm telling, like, I'm telling you like 10 years, this brother I haven't seen for, sorry, not 10 years. Yeah, like nine, 10 years almost. He added me on Facebook a couple months ago. 
And I was like, subhanAllah, yes? 20 years. 20 years, right? 20 years. MashaAllah, it's, it's a great way to reconnect. This is the brother that I went, I st uh, went to Mecca to briefly study at an intensive over the summer. And he added me, and I hadn't talked to him in so long. And I was like, SubhanAllah. And I saw pictures of his kids. How many of you, older uncles or aunties, you see pictures of your relatives' new babies on Facebook, right? Or, <laughs> yes, no? Why are we laughing? Are babies funny? Uh, <laughs> You know, I know that one way to keep up with my nephew is my mom or my sister or my dad will put pictures, right? I'm friends with my mom and dad on Facebook. Okay, don't laugh. <laughs> we'll put pictures of my nephew on Facebook and my wife and I will log on and just see. It's a lot quicker than emailing it, right? A lot of good uses is for these things. So we can't definitively and categorically deny that these things bring clear, they bring good. And you can, do, you can even get hasanat for these things. Remember, with an intention, with a pure intention, an act that is not definitively good or bad, something that's not good or bad, can become amazing, can become something that will get you a lot of good deeds, a lot of points, right? A lot of gold coins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We're talking the video game generation, but gold coins, okay. Now, now that we've covered the good, right? And that we know that there are good parts to Facebook, I want to give three problems that I see with Facebook. And this is coming from someone who has a Facebook, who has over a thousand friends, Sheikh Kasser, who, you know, is probably friends with a lot of you and probably get a lot more requests tonight. But I make sure that I don't add those creepy people with like not real names, you know? It's like, it's like a restaurant, you know? So I want to make sure, I want to let you guys know about the three things that I'm really seeing problems with. And again, it's coming from a guy who has a Facebook and who loves his Facebook and enjoys using it to reach out and communicate. The number one problem, and again, I know we're having a good time, but let's take this seriously, inshallah. The number one problem that we have with Facebook as a community and as individuals is the problem of wasting time. It has become a habit now to the point where people sometimes will open up their internet browser to go look at something and the first thing they click is Facebook and they don't even know why they clicked it. How many of you have a Facebook uh, app on your iPod or iPhone? iPod Touch or iPhone? How, isn't it like the first thing you open up when you unlock your phone? Okay, not you. Isn't it the second thing? <laughs> right? It's very, very common. If you use, if you unlock your phone and you're using your phone, the chances are you will be checking your Facebook app. How many of you, you, tr you look at the clock, right? This happens to me a lot. I lay down in bed, it's like 11.30. I'm like, man, I never thought I would turn this old this fast. <laughs> so I look, I look at the clock, it's 11.30, and I'm like, all right, let me just check my Facebook real quick. I look at the back of the clock, and it's three hours later. <laughs> and I'm like, subhanAllah, right? And then, you know, it's difficult, it's difficult to wake up for Fajr. When you stay up that late looking at, the, looking at Facebook, looking at tweets, looking at anything, like whatever you look at, browsing the web too late, chatting with people on Facebook too late, poking people too much, <laughs> it becomes difficult to wake up and thank Allah, right? And you want to thank Allah. Why? Because Allah gave you the eyes to check your Facebook. He gave you the ability to have, a, He gave you all these things. So imagine all these things Allah is giving you, you're using them all night long, and then you forget to wake up and thank Him. Oh. Right? Thank you. That's a very good. That's a good reaction. No. That's a very good reaction. Zakhla khair. But let's try to keep the reactions inside. So we need to make sure that we are vigilant and we watch over. If you have to set a timer, set a timer, right? Now, unless your mom's making the biryani, don't take that timer. Because <laughs> then you might have a biryani fire. But make sure that you have a clock or a timer in front of you. And I know there's one on everyone's computer. Set a limit for yourself on Facebook. Set a limit for yourself. Say, okay, I got home from school, I wanna chat with some friends, I wanna check my you know, updates, my notifications, I'm gonna be off of Facebook by you know, five o'clock, from four to five or 4.35, whatever. However long you use it, okay? Set a timer, set a limit. The second problem, which is kind of 1B, right? First problem is wasting time. The second thing that goes with that is that there are numerous articles and studies being done that are telling us, and this is actually very scary, that Facebook and this new craze of internet stimulation, right, like Twitter, Facebook, constantly being engaged in something, is causing us, and especially our children, to lose their attention spans. They're being unable to focus, right? In class, it's like so hard to focus. Listening to me right now, big white guy, really hard, <laughs> right? It becomes extremely difficult because you're so used to looking at different things. Click on one friend's page, okay, another friend's page, okay, another friend's page, oh, picture, 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 picture. You don't take the time to appreciate the whole picture, you just look, oh my God, she's doing that, oh my God, he's doing that, oh my God. <laughs> Keep looking through and looking through, and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. That's why these girls are laughing, because it's true. 
It is true. And we're laughing now, we're having a good time, alhamdulillah. Alham everyone say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we're having a good time. But it's real, guys and girls, it's real. You don't want this to ruin the way that your mind functions. And one way you can remedy this is number one, by managing your time on Facebook. But number two is to use or do activities that will train your mind to have focus. So make a deal with yourself. Every time I go on Facebook, I'm also going to go to CNN. I'm also going to go to ESPN. I'm also going to go to whatever website and read an article, a full article, a full article. You know, guys, for a while, subhanAllah, like a few months ago, one of my friends came up to me and he was like, do you know that there was an article that said that people can't even finish reading a full article? I was like, really? Where was he? He's like, I don't know, I didn't read it. <laughs> and he was being serious. He was being serious. He's like, I don't know, I didn't read it. And I thought about it and I was like, you know what? It's true. I try to read articles all the time, right? About how the Dallas Mavericks are terrible, how the Chicago Bulls are so much better. And I can't even finish an article on it, right? But I don't need to because it's true. So remember, Remember, inshallah, <coughs> this means quiet, okay. Remember, inshallah, to do activities with your brain, whatever it might be, that cause you to focus, to train your mind so you don't lose that ability because you don't want to lose that ability later on in life, it will harm you a lot, right? It will harm you a lot. The second thing that we need to be aware of, right? I don't want to call it a danger because it's not going to come out and bite us, but the, sec the second thing that we need to be aware of, and again, this is a very serious issue, is that we allow our private mistakes to become public. We allow the things that we do incorrectly and that we don't want people to see or that we'd be embarrassed for people to see, it becomes a lot easier for just a picture of it to be put on Facebook. How many people in this room, do not raise your hand please. How many people, sisters? How many people in this room have seen a picture of someone that they didn't know, or I'm sorry, have seen a picture of someone on Facebook that they knew, but they didn't know that, that they were involved in the act that they saw the picture of. So for example, you had a brother or a sister that maybe you were cool with, right? You met them every once in a while, maybe you said salam to them at Jummah, and then you go on Facebook and you see a picture of them drinking, or smoking a bomb, or doing any of these terrible things, right? I know, I know, but just keep it serious, okay? This is actually serious stuff. How many times have you guys looked on a picture and you see a picture of one of your friends who you didn't know had a boyfriend, or one of your friends who you didn't know had a girlfriend, right? A lot of exposure is being done on Facebook. And this is scary enough, but there's actually a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that's actually kind of frightening. The Prophet ﷺ, he tells us in a hadith that he says, all of my followers, all of the Muslims, right? We're the Prophet's followers, right? Everyone say, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We're the followers of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. We're very blessed, man. Prophet Musa salam, he like wanted to be part of Muhammad's ummah so bad. And we got that chance. Muhammad Sallallahu he said, all of my followers, all of them, all of their sins can be forgiven, except those who are not ashamed of doing their sins publicly. Those who, when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala at night, when they commit a sin, which by the way, we all commit sins. Just because I'm, I'm up here doesn't mean I don't, I, uh, I don't make mistakes. We all make mistakes, it's natural. But it's not natural to expose it. It's not natural to take that sin and say, guess what I did last night? Guess who I saw last night? Guess who I did last night, right? Any of these things. It's not natural that you laugh, but it's serious. It's not natural to expose these things. The natural occurrence, when you make a mistake, what do we always learn from a young age? Say, sorry. Except maybe you don't say it to your parents, this time you say it to Allah. When you make a mistake, you say, Ya Allah, I'm sorry. Ya Allah, you gave me these hands and this body and this face and these eyes, and I'm using them to make mistakes. And I'm really sorry, Allah, please, please forgive me. And then, inshallah, Allah will forgive you. But if you allow people, or even worse, allow or try to get people to take pictures of you when you're making those mistakes or when you're doing those things, or you write on people's walls that things that are very clearly not supposed to be written, and everyone can see it, then it's a very scary premonition that you might not be able to have that sin forgiven. And on the day of judgment, standing in front of Allah, Allah will say, I hid that sin from people. I made sure no one saw it. Why did you go and let everyone see it? Right? It's like when you're, when you're walking down the stairs and you trip and fall, the first thing you do is what? Look around, right? Like no one saw it, right? The guy who's like, oh, it's a code, don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Is way different than the guy who's like, everyone look at this. This dude just tripped, right? 
They're so different. The first one, you're like, thank you so much. The second one, you're like, man, I hate you. I never liked you anyways. <laughs> right? It's the same thing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He allows you, when He, Allah can see your mistakes, but He hides them. Imagine if, how it was if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us have a shirt with all of our mistakes written on it. And everyone can see it. Everyone can see it. He doesn't do that. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Everyone say Alhamdulillah. The last thing is what I want to call Facebook personality disorder. A story, really quickly, just to illustrate this point. I'm a youth director at a masjid, right? An, an unnamed masjid. Oh wait, he already named it. Never mind. <laughs> and this one kid came. This one kid that I, I'm friends with him on Facebook. He added me when I, when I went there to go give a speech in February. And uh, I've noticed on his Facebook that he speaks very thuggish. <laughs> and so, I don't know why that's funny, but okay. So, <laughs> so he's like, he starts saying like, yo man, like, let's go hit up the club, right? And like, starts talking like that, right? Very like much, very into like this Little Wayne, Drake, all this kind of stuff, right? Wiz Khalifa, Kesha, I don't know why he likes Kesha, but. So he's very into all these kind of, you know, music, this kind of culture. And then when I meet him in real life, and I'm not making fun of anyone, please forgive me. He goes, Salaamu Alaikum, man, what's going on? Hardcore like Daisy accent. Like, Are Yad, what's up? You know? <laughs> right? And on his, on his iPod Touch, I kid you not, I saw it today, was Wallahi Al-Azim Talat, a Shah Rukh Khan movie. And this kid's like the most like thuggish kid online that I've ever met. I'm like scared of him online. I'm like, dude, I don't got no money, you know? Like, he's very, very like into that gangster culture. But then in real life, he's like very, very much like Pakistani pride, you know? Like he's a walking mela, you know? Like, and I was just so confused. I couldn't put the two together. I was like, wait, this doesn't make sense. And then it hit me. You know how the way that you act at home is different than the way that you act at school? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, don't, uh, okay. Anyone whose parents are here, don't, don't answer. But do you know how the way that you act at home is, the, is different than the way that you act in front of your friends sometimes? Facebook is adding a third part to that. Before, for everyone, for me, for all of us mostly, you acted differently with your friends than you would with your parents. And that's not necessarily a good thing, but unfortunately it's true and we have to work on that. Facebook's adding a third component, that now people act differently online than they do at home, than they do at school, than they do online. It's causing us to have to lie to ourselves. It's causing us to have to try to be someone who we're not. And this is extremely dangerous. Because then as you get older, you'll become accustomed to having lies just roll off your tongue. And when people ask you questions, it'll actually be shocking to you when you tell the truth. And that's not a good state to be in. Because the person, it's one of the signs of a hypocrite, is that when they speak, they tell lies. And so we don't want to become in the habit, become accustomed to, become encultured to telling lies to ourselves especially. That's very dangerous. So I have three solutions. The first, like we said, is to monitor your time. Make sure that you are taking not that much time and make sure you set a cutoff point. I'm only gonna use Facebook for this much time. Don't stay up till two in the morning on Facebook chat. The second thing is that you want to remember that everyone sins. Remember this. Don't ever think that, okay, I, my pictures of this sin are on Facebook because I'm a sinner and that person's not. No. Everyone sins, man. The people who are going to Jannah, they committed sins. But the difference between them and the people going to Hellfire is that the people going to Jannah, one, tried to hide their sins from people because they knew that it was not good to uh, you know, publicly expose it. And number two, just like in private they did the sins, in private they also asked Allah to forgive them. So the people of Jannah and the people of Hellfire were the same. But what lifted the people of Jannah up is that they had the ability and the humility to say, Ya Allah, I'm sorry, please, please forgive me. And that's a very important characteristic to have. Try to make sure that you do not expose your private sins via Facebook or via phone or text or whatever, inshallah. The third and last thing is to be who you are. And I, I was researching for hadith and I'm sure there are plenty. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to ask Shaykh Yasser. But I just want to say this straight from my heart, right? A hadith of, uh, of, uh, of Abdul Rahman, which is like not worth anything, right? You're not going to find any like books on it, you know? No, you won't. <laughs> Maybe my Facebook, right? But... Okay, that was a terrible joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you guys, especially younger kids and younger females, you are all so cool. I'm being dead serious, I'm not just saying it. Except for you, Faiz. <laughs> all of you are super cool. Super cool, mashallah. Seriously, like if I could be any of you, I would do it. Seriously. 
please save me, right? <laughs> so don't try to be someone else. Like be proud of who you are. You're a Muslim. You're a young Muslim man. You're a young Muslim woman. And inshallah, Allah loves you and He wants you to go to Jannah. That's why He chose you to be Muslim. And you have so much to give, right? So many talents. You are all very good looking, very confident people, mashallah. Don't try to be someone who you're not. You're not this random girl named Kesha who sings songs about getting drunk in the morning and going <laughs> hang out with guys. You're not Wiz Khalifa who all he talks about is getting high. You're not Lil Wayne who talks about how death, he doesn't even think about it. You're much better than these people. May Allah guide all of them to Islam and make them cool like us. But you are much cooler than these people. Don't be someone else, be yourself. Wallahi, that's the best advice. I know it sounds like a lame commercial, but I'm for real, right? I'm for real with you guys. Real talk, be yourself inshallah ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all ourselves and make our true selves those who follow Him and follow no one else through the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and the guidance of those who followed Him and our teachers and scholars. Jazakallah khair wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.